Today's a day that we are finally <laughs> reviewing the task B essay that I've been working on over the last few weeks in my Write a Task B Essay With Me series. If you haven't seen the first five parts <laughs> of that series, click here. Um, I did the prompt analysis, I did the first, second, third and fourth paragraphs, <laughs> which we'll read in a second. But essentially, I wrote the whole essay, it's about beauty, I think it's pretty good, I think it's better than my task A1 as per usual. So if you would like to see the essay in whole now, then this is the video, we're gonna go over it, we're gonna try and make it better, I'm gonna critique it, I'm gonna spot the things that are not so good with it and the things that are, <laughs> I think, at least good with it. Just so that you guys can see me break down my own writing and see how I would improve on my own writing and just to see my come writing. On, come on, come on, come on, come on, <laughs> so I'm excited, let's get into it. Come on, 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 be able to do the same. It's lots of fun. I'm getting better as I go along. <laughs> I hope you guys are as well. So if you do like this content, please feel free to give this video a like because it really helps the algorithm and helps my channel grow and so I can get the word out there and subscribe if you're not already because I really will appreciate it. Today we're going through the task B essay critique to try and improve this essay, spot the things that are wrong with it and try and make it better just to kind of go over it and see what I've written over the last few weeks. The prompts, if you don't remember, kind of tended about towards the, the topic of the power of beauty. Um, and I quite liked them. I turned it into a bit of a power of the beauty of nature kind of essay, because one of the prompts was about the beauty of nature um, and how that makes you feel. Um, so I went with that one, I made a big plan. I decided to write reflectively as I usually do. And then I wrote my essay. And it went something like this. <laughs> We're the kings of the world, we yelled, atop an awe-inspiring mountain range covered in ancient European ruins in a small town in Montenegro. I'm not sure why we said we were kings, as all three of us were girls, but I suppose that's the simplicity of being 18. This was also pre my extensive education on the binaries of gender growing up in a modern 21st century Sydney young ad adulthood. So if it were now, we might have said we're the queens of the world, but in an intersectional feminist sort of way that supports the equality of the sexes, the need for more women to ascend to positions of power, and the fluidity of the gender binary. So I'd probably change that to like fluidity of gender, maybe. Look, this I could put in brackets as well to make it like a second thought, like it's kind of part of the story, but it also kind of isn't that important. Um, and I just put it in there to like show that I'm like, an aware citizen. Um, also, you know, this this wasn't true. I don't think we said we were the kings of the world, but I, I said that so I could make a bigger statement about gender, I guess, or about like something funny. Um, so I could just use some humor or whatever and throw you into the, the story straight away. Um, although I think it's still pretty good. I'm not, I'm, I'm not too mad about it. <laughs> so I go, go on to say, Standing on top of a beautiful mountain overlooking a view of the old town, the river running by it, the dark green trees blanketing the mountains beside it, with two of my best friends, one of them my ex, was exactly what we needed to get out of ourselves and into our world. Although it was 5.30am, we were all groggy and we were drenched in sweat from the hike up, I suddenly felt at peace staring at that view. It was in this moment that I first recognised the power of nature. In its simple yet extravagant beauty, the sight of an enormous, wonderful piece of the world made me forget the worries of the man-made one that I lived in. The naivety... <laughs> naive day of my adolescence, the relationship issues with my friends, the realization that we were alone on the top of a small, on the top of a tall mountain in a foreign country, all went away as we witnessed the sun climb behind the mountains. This, I thought to myself, is what it means to be alive. What it means to be alive. Look, I actually really like that. Um, I like the way I've told the story in the moment. I've described the situation. I've described the mountains, the trees, the river. Um, I've kind of said how we were feeling, um, what was going through our heads. Um, and then I've kind of leaned towards the thesis in the end, which is about the power of the beauty of nature. Um, so I think that's actually quite a good anecdote paragraph. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> to toot my own horn, I think it's actually quite good. So we'll see how the rest of it goes. Um, 
The lesson I learned atop that mountain in Montenegro is one that has stuck with me throughout my early adult life and that influenced my attitude towards my life in the city, my relationship with my surroundings and experiencing moments with those around me. So you can tell that I'm starting to reflect on this memory that I've described in the first paragraph. And that's what I do in this reflection paragraph. I reflect, <laughs> um, I open up, I share things about how I felt then, how I feel, feel about it now um, and how it kind of hints at something bigger, which is in this case, the power of nature. <laughs> Um, it is moments like these that remind me to get out of my body, or more often and urgently, my mind. I think that's a nice touch. <laughs> and into the world around me. This is something I still often forget to do, so I kind of like go in between how I felt about it then and how I feel about it now. Um, being a city dweller, a Sydney sider, born and raised in a city of millions. You know, I wasn't actually born in Sydney, but I think these are just like things that you can say. It doesn't really matter. You can make stuff up if you want to, if it's harmless <laughs> and it just is part of your storytelling um the city can so easily swallow you whole before you even realize you were the meal you know i try and use this like visual language visual language um accompanied in my reflection to keep the tone of the storytelling paragraph i suppose this is why people say travel and change is so important being exposed to different cultures locations and ways of life around the world has expanded my worldview beyond the one which was handed to me by my parents of course many people don't have the ability to experiencing that so i hear i'm starting to do some um reflecting from other people's perspectives considering my situation in comparison to what i understand others to be um sadly sometimes ever in their lifetime and my privilege as a middle class woman living in a developed country has allowed me luxuries that others don't have others can't afford you know um trying just trying to show that like cultural and um self-awareness um, an awareness of privilege, um, which I think comes across quite well. It's something I was taught to do a lot in my communications degree. Um, but this only makes me more grateful for what I do have. It's showing gratefulness, hopefully. Reflecting on memories like this reminds me that although I do live in a fast paced, bustling, busy city, I am lucky. My point is that living in the city only makes me appreciate the beauty and power of nature even more. I can't be certain if others feel the same. So I'm starting to express my limits to empathize with other people. Or if my friends felt the same as I did in that moment, perhaps they were busting for the loo or focused on the thought of breakfast or worried about the height at which we were elevated. But somehow, some way, I know. <laughs> Nature is one of the most objective beauties of all. So now I'm starting to tend to my thesis more, which is that nature is one of the most objective beauties of all. I'm making a statement, I'm making a claim about the power of nature being objective in its beauty, um, which is a claim because the objectivity subjectivity debate of beauty <laughs> um, is is one that's quite contentious. It's been discussed by philosophers. How do we know that something is objective versus subjective? Um, is everything beautiful in, in its essence or is it only beautiful um, through the lens of the eye of the beholder? Is <laughs> beauty in the eye of the beholder? Wow. <laughs> um, so I think that's kind of what I'm tending towards here. Again, it's quite philosophical. I should have learned from my mistake in my task A one. Um, but probably also good to talk about the philosophy of beauty because it shows that kind of like higher order thinking, understanding um, of philosophy, which comes across well if you do it well. So I'm not sure if I have it here, but overall, I think that reflection paragraph was quite strong as well and I'm very happy with it. So my third paragraph, I kind of relate the story to a bigger thing, make a commentary on something in wider society or how my story can relate to wider society more generally. Um, I say, sadly, I'm not the only one these days who forgets the beauty and power of nature. Okay. Modern Western societies are so consumed by the drive of capitalism and the desire for greed. So I'm already noticing that I'm kind of not talking directly about my thesis here, which I thought I was going to be talking about nature being objective but i think i talk about that in my conclusion too so it's interesting that i've taken it this way when it's not exactly about the power of the beauty of nature but it's kind of talking about maybe trying to explain why living in the city takes away the opportunity to relish in the power of nature and the beauty of nature okay Modern Western societies are so consumed by the drive of capitalism and the de desire for greed and attaining more and more that we forget to slow down, relax into our natural impulses and refrain from joining the rat race. I think that's quite good. 
Such a relentless pursuit calls for a solution before mental health issues rise beyond rehabilitation. Perhaps looking to non-Western cultures may help us with this. So then I go into my example. Australian indigenous culture is centered around the connection between man and nature and details the profound power of land. The Dreamtime tells the story of the Earth's creation, the First Nations people's experience with our land, experiences with our land, the Australian island, and suggests that our feelings of emptiness within a capitalist system is a signifier of a greater cultural malaise. I think that's nice. <laughs> it is a severe shame, so I'm going on to my analysis, my interpretation of the example, that we do not appreciate, integrate, or include Australian Indigenous teachings more into our country's Western watch washed culture. Perhaps such an integration would heal some of the suffering that our citizens experience, feeling like a number in a system, a lost soul in a political structure, a country without a distinct culture. I think this stuff comes across quite well because I'm passionate about it. Um, if you compare this to the second body paragraph in my task A essay, which you can also watch here, um, you can tell that I know what I'm talking about a bit more because I've, I've chosen something that I've thought about before. Like I've said in previous videos, if you do the thinking before and then you write about an you write an essay about something that you've thought about before, it'll be so much easier to write it rather than trying to like figure out your thoughts on the spot. Um, at least a balance of the two is nice if you can. Then I say, Australian Indigenous culture praises and highlights the beauty, power and meaning in connecting to the land and putting the land first. Of course, now I go into my counter argument. There are complexities in integrating Australian Indigenous teaching and culture into Western culture. In some ways, doing so would remind us of our terrible historical past of assimilation and cultural obliteration. And perhaps Indigenous Australians would want to preserve their culture without changing it to fit the white man, the thief of their culture and land. After all, when white settlers invaded Australia, we stole the land, the very thing that we may need to heal us. So this is interesting because I'm, I'm cautious of doing othering and putting myself in the shoes of or taking the perspective of a white person in this essay, although I am white living in Australia and I'm not indigenous, so I can't, I wouldn't be able to take an indigenous perspective per se um, and do it justice honestly. Um, I'm not sure, you know, when I said we stole the land, I guess I'll ask this to you guys, answer this in the comments. Um, do you think that it's good to, to, to put your identity into this essay? Um, although I guess I have kind of established that early earlier on um, and that me living in Sydney, look, I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe I, it is the right thing to do, to show an awareness of like what my identity is um, what I have to be grateful for and to to mourn for, to, to apologise for in a way. Um, yeah. I guess it's more just about respect. Like, so long as you're showing respect um, and non-judgmentality and I think it's just all about respect. If you can show that you respect other cultures and can understand the complexity of history an of identity um, and modern society, then that's what you want to aim for. But naturally, I don't know if I've done this perfectly, so maybe I could write a sentence about that as well. Um, you know, like, maybe I'll add that here. Um, hence, if we are to look to Indigenous Australian culture to help heal us, we must assure that we also focus on solving Australia's racism, discrimination, and disenfranchisement issues towards our First Nations people, then maybe I'll say being a white person living in Australia, I, my limit to truly empathise the complexity of the um, um, issues facing our First Nations is limited um, and I don't, cannot admit to knowing the right thing to do, but I 
my belief, or I can say, but I believe that a careful, respectful appreciation and incorporation of Australian Indigenous, Australian Aboriginal or First Nations culture may be a component of this process and may help heal us, all of us, from a history of neglect, violence and isolation that has certainly crept into our country today. Perhaps that's a little bit more balanced, balanced than really showing my limited perspective, um, but at least that I'm trying. Complicated stuff, <laughs> certainly complicated stuff. Overall, I think that's a fairly strong paragraph though. Um, it's definitely taken my discussion of nature and tied it to something more contemporary, something like a bigger social justice issue, which I think is a nice thing to do in reflective essays. You know, yes, your story is valid and meaningful to tell, but what, do, what can it tell us about the wider world? How can you link that to other things in society? I think it's strong when you're able to do that well. So then my conclusion, I start to address the actual thesis a little bit more. The perceived beauty of nature being objective is perhaps a contentious statement to make. Philosophers have been disputing this very topic for centuries. However, there seems to be a shared human experience involving the beauty of nature. And from what I have seen, enjoying the wonder and awe that nature brings when done, when done with other people brings us together as human beings. I think that's nice. <laughs> I've started to actually say, um, what my thesis is and explain it. Um, and I, it shows that like, I had a little think about this before I started writing. I tried to think about how I could bring it back to my thesis um, and take a more nuanced perspective on, of what, on what my thesis is, which is about the objectivity of nature, considering philosophy and um, what actually objectivity means <laughs> and how beauty can be perceived. So I think that's, that bit's good. Um, no matter where we come from, our culture, our country, our nation, our past, I think nature holds some of the answers that we so desperately long for on such a fast paced globe. For me, the only time that I feel like I truly stop or take a break from the rat race is when I am in nature. And it seems that many others do as well. Perhaps this is just a sign I need to meditate more and is a sign of my own cultural malaise, but I don't think I am alone in this feeling. It might also just be a facet of the West, a culture so focused on progress, pursuit and possession and my disconnection from nature can be attributed to living in a Western society. No matter the reason, a solution is needed. Whether we look to other cultures for help or address the shortcomings of our respective cultures, we ought to prioritize our nature, to be one with our natural surroundings and with each other. The mountains in Montenegro did this for my friends and I. They brought us together. I can only hope we, might all, get, we all might get to experience moments like this, even just for a minute, as the sun rises before another day begins. Honestly, this is one of the best task BSAs I've written. <laughs> so, use this <laughs> um it's here for you i would you i would put this as an exemplar um i'm not trying to toot my own horn <laughs> i am trying to look at this objectively but um this is better than what i wrote on the day of my actual gamsat um and my task b essay in my actual gamsat in march was better than my task a and i think it got me the 80. so if this is better um use this as an exemplar um yeah i i think it's good <laughs> it's much better than my task asa task b reflectives have always been my strength but this is certainly shows some progress from where i was last year um so cool that you guys got to witness it <laughs> um i'm i'm pretty happy with this like let me know if you have any critiques below in the comments that i haven't spotted um but I am pretty proud of this one. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you liked it. Um, I guess there wasn't that much editing and critiquing in this, but more just pointing out the stuff that I liked. Um, there are a couple of things that I could have fixed up, um, which I think I did, but I think overall it's quite good. So let me know what you think below. I hope you like liked this series. I hope you found it helpful to see how I actually write my essays. Let me know in the comments below as well if you want me to do another series like this with different prompts. But yeah, I guess now that this series is done, I have to think about what I'm, I'm gonna do next on this channel. More theory videos, more writing videos. Let, let me know what you guys wanna see because it really helps me when you guys send me things about like, I really would like you to make a video about this or I need some help with this and then I'm happy to make videos for you guys to do it. The channel's growing, <laughs> it's awesome. I'm really enjoying making videos about section two as well. 
so that's cool yeah and i feel like it's just the beginning you know so yeah thanks for coming along for the ride <laughs> thanks for watching if you've got up to this point and i guess otherwise i'll see you for the next video very soon so girls moving around if you see your main girl get the brother up down and just uh come on come on just uh breathe stop for real and give it what you got just uh breathe